You are welcome to DBA TV, where we discuss everything international trade. Uh, in this series, you are going to be learning about what each of the Nigerian states have to offer as far as export is concerned. You know, I have maintained that Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars and that they can be self-sufficient. But, you know, because the number of governors comes in, not the intention of generating income, but with the intention of sharing the money. Uh, but in this particular episode, we have put together a series of videos for all the Nigerians from Abia to Zamfara. And this to enable the new governors that are coming in or the new administration in different states of the country to be able to take a cue from what we've shared in this video, which, by the way, covers the peculiarity of each state apart from the preamble. It talks about the profile of the profit, oh, sorry, of the debt <laughs> and income of the state. It talks about the potential of the state. It talks about the purchaser of the product the state have to offer. And of course, the pro pro exportable product and also the proposal we have for the state and how the state can directly profit from exporting raw materials, manufactured goods, uh, solid minerals, and agri commodity. I believe this will be of interest to you and maybe to your governor or the commissioner, wherever it is in your state. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy your, uh, yourself as you learn through what maybe your state is what we are looking at today, what Nigerian state have to offer. Happy listening. Thank you very much. So as usual, I have seven items to talk about, preamble, basically talking about the need for Anambra state to export. Then I will talk about peculiarity of Anambra state, just basically talking about the people, the local government, the location and the like. Then the depth profile of the state, the unemployment rate in the state, the income of the state, the IGR of the state. Then we move on to, poten to potential. What are the things that the states have? that have export market. Then we talk about the purchasers. Who are the people that can buy all over the world? And what is the size of the market like? Who are the people that can buy all over the world? And what is the size of the market for this product? What is the size of the market for this product? And then proposal. I have proposal every week. I will choose a product that can be found in the state and make my own submission on what I think the state can do to leverage on that product and be able to achieve some uh, good income. And I call it export driven income generation and export driven job creation. So we can have job export driven income generation and export driven job creation. We just need our governors to think a little bit outside the box. You know, the governor of uh, Cross River did a lot in this regard, but the way it was designed is not the most of the factory built are not designed to grow SME export. They are designed to have um, this glory of the state producing but without much impact in the economy. Because, I mean, it's the people that own it that get the money and uh, maybe some few farmers, but I have a, a model that I've worked in other clients that I feel we can adopt to be able to maximize the opportunities in Anambra State. And I'm talking about that today as usual. I do this every week. If you have been with me, you have an idea of what I'm talking about. We just adapt it for Anambra State. This is the logo of Anambra State. These are the local government in the state. The state is currently under a big siege with um, unknown government. Some people call it unknown no man. It's a big challenge. I was in Enugu sometimes, was it early this year or late last year? And it was, I mean, it was, it was a challenge really. People have to come in early to the hotel to be able to attend the program because of the Monday uh, not going out, paralyzing the economy of the Southeastern state. So preamble, why should an Ambra state export? 
to avoid over dependence on federal allocation. And you're going to see the dependence level of Anambra State today on federal allocation to avoid over dependence on federal allocation. There are some states in Nigeria, if you remove the shock absorber of federal allocation, those states cannot exist. Those states cannot exist. If you remove the federal allocation, those states cannot exist. And it's so sad, sincerely. It's so sad because, you know, I, I said this, I've been saying this every week that the worst that can happen to a state is for the state governor to sleep from beginning of the month to the end of the month, do nothing, but he will get money to pay salary at the end of the month without doing anything. Because some people are doing the job and they are sharing the money. It just makes the governor lazy. I strongly believe if there's no federal allocation and governor need to think and do a lot of work to generate income, maybe we'll have less unserious and incompetent people ruling our state, maybe. But because there is money, so even if the governor is not adding, he doesn't know anything, he can't add any value, do you know what? The governor will pay, will pay salary and he will be praised. No, just imagine, he will be praised for paying salary. They say, ah, after all, it's not always salary. I see if he's doing a favor for paying people money due to them for the job they've done. You know? But well, that's our country for you. That's our country for you. That's the structure the military has left with us. And we are still with it. Hoping that it will change. It can help boost the state, GDP of the state. Export has the capacity to create opportunity for SME to grow. And I'll talk a lot about this towards the end, like I often do. But now, from the perspective of an Anambra state, it makes the state's businesses to depend less on the domestic market. So that even when there's a recession in the domestic market, there are opportunities outside to latch onto. The state is able to earn export proceeds and grow revenue. Export proceeds and grow revenue. Export proceeds and grow revenue. The state can generate revenue by exporting. It makes farming to become more lucrative. It helps the state to gain global market share and recognition as the volume grows. The state, because of the competition, the state can become home of creativity and innovation because the businesses are going to begin to become to become innovative, to compete in the national market because you're going to see what other people are doing. It can make the state to be, it can become industrial star catalyst for the state. Export create job for youth because of increased market and more capacity business have to build to meet those demand, the state is able to know their competitive advantage in the export market. The state can lead the way for other states in Nigeria to follow. This makes the state to be independent of federal allocation. And I'll show you how much the state can make from export and become independent of federal allocation. There are numerous incentives that can be enjoyed by the state the business in the state, rather. Esper can help Anambra to maximize the, the, the indigents abroad. I talked about this on the radio program yesterday, how we can leverage on the presence of our friends and relatives abroad to create a export market and grow export business. The state also True export can kill the lease of state depending on wasting oil assets like oil. Export can help to revive the economy of the state. Export is capable of slowing down rural urban migration. There are tasks and opportunity for the exporter in the state to enjoy. It helps the business to utilize their idle capacity. A state I said in Jigawa State, they say that state is not viable. 
I'm looking forward to the day I will review in Gigawa State. There's no state that's not viable in Nigeria. We just have governors that are not viable. The governors that are not productive. No state, no state. As long as human beings are dead, no state can be discovered in non-viable. There's land. <laughs> there is rain. There is human beings. And say the state is not viable. That's not true. We just have leaders that are not really doing their job, actually. Export is a tool for wealth creation for the state. The state can end directly from it. A number of states can end directly from exportation. It helps the state also to extract the product and uh, found in their state, production of the product found in their state. The people can aim for more improvement because of competition in the export market, and they can zero in on their area of strength as far as export business is concerned. So what do you see in Anambra? What do you see in Anambra? What are the things you see in Anambra state? Do you see unemployment in Anambra state? Of course there are unemployment. I'm not disputing that fact. What do you see in Anambra state? Do you see poverty in Anambra state? Of course there are poverty, and I'm not denying that fact. What do you see in Anambra state? You see frustration? Of course there are frustration in Anambra state. Now, but I choose to see opportunities in farming in Anambra State, opportunities in mining, and opportunities in the population of the state. Peculiarities of Anambra State. Anambra State was created in 1976 from the then East Central State by the regime of General Mutala Mohammed, and the capital was in Enugu. The further state creation is signed by the regime. Of Bangida on 27th of August, developed Anambra State again into Anambra and then Enugu. Well, Enugu have always been the capital, even when it was Anambra State, before Enugu was cashed out. The capital of the present state, of course, is Oka, bounded by Delta, Edo, Imo. River to the south, Enugu to the east, Fogi to the north, Anambra State derived its name from River Anambra, which transverse the state. Of course, the state has male local government. This is rich in oil, gas, bauxite, ceramic. All, and almost 100% of arable soil. Most of its natural resources likely remain on top. Oh, oh. This is a very industrial state. And most of the industrial base of the state is private sector driven, spanning from agri-life to automobile, to manufacturing, and which is situated mainly in Newi industrial belt. On the market is reputed as the Biggest market in West Africa. It is nicknamed Land of the Beauty, Land of Beauty, most densely populated in Nigeria and has a large market right there in Onicha. Total land size 4,865 kilometers square, capital in Oka, half 21 local government, with a population of about 5.8 million people. It's located in tropical rainforest region. Major crop being oil palm, rice, citrus, fruits, citrus fruit, maize, cassava. Um, solid mineral being lignite, kaolin, limestone, lead ore, gypsum. <clears throat> and this state have four agricultural zone, Oka zone, Anambra zone, Aguata zone, and Onicha zone. Opportunities in Anambra include agribusiness, auto parts, light manufacturing, healthcare, tourism, energy, and mining. <clears throat> the state has a competitive advantage, being the largest market in, uh, <clears throat> in Africa, home to Onisha River, natural gas and crude oil, up to 10 trillion cubic feet of untapped gas. International airport, key logistics for other states, home of Newe automobile cluster, 
second most densely populated state, one of the highest GDP per capita in Nigeria, low, <coughs> low, low crime rate. <coughs> Can we say that of this state now? This was in 2018 by the by uh, NIPC. Can we say that now? No, low crime rate. I don't think so. It's really terrible in Anambra right now. Now, IGR, $26.4 billion. Budget in 2020, 137. <laughs> Let's check the unemployment level. <coughs> Unemployment level in the state. Unemployment level in the state. Unemployment level in the state is 951,000. Almost a million people are unemployed. Total unemployed. Almost a million people are unemployed in this state. Remember, the state is just about 6 million people, so you can understand what percentage you are looking at there. Almost a million people are unemployed in Anambra State. The GDP is 75% services, 8% industry, and 17% are Greek. Let's move to the profile of the state. The debt profile, the last governor has not done that state well at all. Peter Obi has always claimed he left a lot of money in the profile of the state. <coughs> that means eight years ago, the state was in positive. <clears throat> but today, I think Zoludo said he met about 300 million in the account. <clears throat> With almost <coughs> with several debt profile. Look at the state. The state owed domestic debt about 60 billion. <coughs> about 60 billion. <coughs> and, uh, and foreign debt of about 110 billion, <coughs> which is under 60 <coughs> billion naira. <coughs> So sorry. <clears throat> Oil and 10 million foreign debt, <clears throat> which is under 60 billion, 60 billion naira. 60 billion plus that's over about 120 or over 120 billion. You will notice the IGR of the state has been growing. But a very slow pace is currently at 28.01 as of 2020. I want to see the federal allocation of the state. Can you see the federal allocation of the state? It's actually at about 54 billion as of 2020. So when you look at this state, when you look at this state, I want to look at the percentage of the federal allocation and idea. This state cannot survive without federal allocation. Federal allocation is actually 28. Federal allocation is actually 28. Percent, sorry, 28. Federal allocation is actually 54 percent. And the um, federal allocation is actually 65 percent. And the IGR of the state is 34 percent. 34 percent. The state is spending a lot on um, capital and expenditure, which is commendable, 63%. But this state cannot survive without federal allocation. And so sad. I mean, this is very sad about a state like Anambra State. Very, very sad. The state is practically living on handout. The state cannot pay its bills and meet up with its budget if it depends only on, <clears throat> on its own idea. That's why I said a number of state governments in Nigeria without doing anything, and I mean without doing jack, you know jack. <laughs> without doing jack. Without doing any goddamn thing. The state can The state can make money. Can you imagine that? How can a state able to make money <clears throat> without doing anything? 
because there is federal allocation from Abuja. According to budget, Anambra said he marked third in 2021 physical performance ranking, down one position from the second position in 2020, <clears throat> being the second best performer in the Southeast. Historically, a low debt state, but the state saw a year on year surge in domestic debt. Um, I guess he was talking about when Peter Obi was there, but he saw in domestic debt in the state. <clears throat> but the state still have one of the lowest debts, domestic debt, ranking number 24. So there's a lot of states in Nigeria owing so much. The state IGR is low compared to its production and its economic potential. In 2020, its IGR per capita stood at 4.5 which is slightly less than the country I, uh, average idea. <clears throat> now, despite a slowdown in idea, the state was one of the five states that prioritized investment in capital infrastructure, which is commendable. And that's why you see that also in the, uh, in the spending of the state, the law of, a lot of money went into infrastructure. A lot of money went into infrastructure. What are the potential of this state? What does the state have to offer? Offer, like I said earlier, is rich in natural gas, crude oil, bauxite, ceramic. The state aimed to become top three producer of rice, cassava, and maize in 2017. For this time, the government increased its 2017 budget allocation to agriculture by 500%. So $5.4 billion, a billion naira. With most of Anambra's agricultural arable land, and the state has a put some potential to produce crops such as vegetable rice, cassava, in a commercial quantity. In addition, the presence of mineral resources such as iron ore, limestone, natural gas, and coal provide a wide range of possibilities for backward integration. The state has the economic hub, Nnewi Onicha and Oka. Nnewi and Onicha are known for their large industrial and commercial operation. And is the second smallest state in the country by landmass. That's why you have the high population density with less than 300,000 hectares of land available for cultivation. However, the state's success is on strategic approach to agree. Investors in the state include Kostarish, Joseph Agro, Dell Farms, Across Rice, Tomato, Mud Plant, Integrated Farm Project, Rice Production, in our 16 was made to be 230,000 metric tons. In an umbrella state, this state mainly produce oil palm, rice, citrus fruit, maize, cassava, kaolin, lead or iron or gypsum. The state initiated the agricultural regulation initiated by the Korean administration led to the establishment of an agricultural export program resulting in the first vegetable export in 2016. Now, this vegetable export has been questioned and queried. Customs said they can't see where it passed. They can't see where that $5 million of vegetable passed. And, you know, when Obi are not celebrated this thing, a lot of questions were being asked. Even quarantine, they don't know where it passed. That's not my major discussion here, but I don't think we should be doing propaganda. I mean, let's export and generate income and not just be interested in how much we are talking about in terms of what was sold, but rather we should focus more on uh, developing creative for the state. Now let's move on to discuss, let's move on to discuss the purchasers. So who are those that can purchase the item of this state? The first product I will show you is rice. The state is doing a lot with rice. Look at the market for rice, $24.7 billion. $24.7 billion. An Umbra state can produce and export rice and get a share of this huge market. 
You can see how much people are buying it in Asia. Even in Africa, United States and Italy. Let's look at Africa. Do you know a quarter, one third, sorry, a quarter, 25% of the total export rice in the world are purchased by Africa? Out of the $24 billion rice market in the world, Africa is consuming 6%. <laughs> but Africa is not up to a third, a, a quarter of the world population. World population is about less, almost 8 billion people now. So a quarter will be two. But Africa is about 1.3 billion. But Africa is eating more rice. <laughs> when you look at the ratio, Africa is eating a lot of rice. So rice in Africa is a huge market. And I'm glad that Nigeria is not on this list because we have stopped import of rice. Largely, majority of rice coming to Nigeria now coming to Benin. Can you see Benin? As small as Benin is, Benin is smaller than South Africa. Benin is smaller than Egypt. It's smaller than Ethiopia. But Benin consume more rice. Of course, you know that majority of the 12.6% of rice going to Benin are coming into Nigeria. Dry vegetable. This can be produced in an umbrella state. $4.26 billion market. Who are the people buying? China, India, Germany, United States, Egypt, Netherlands, Poland. $4.26 billion. What is the market share of Africa? The Africa is not buying a lot of vegetable. Africa is just about $100 million of the vegetable market. Cassava stash. $1.69 billion from China to Indonesia to Chinese to United States to Malaysia to Japan. These are major importers in the world. Africa is doing very little in that market in terms of demand. Africa is only doing as low as 11.4. 11.4. Then 1.11 billion of corn starch. Apart from cassava starch, even corn starch demand is $1.11 billion. Germany, France, China, Turkey, United States, India are major buyers. And Africa is not playing so well in that market, just 38 million of that one point something billion. Egypt, South Africa, been a major buyer in Africa. The elephants in the room, palm oil. The Southeast can do a lot with palm oil. In all our analysis on the income they can generate, we actually use palm oil. $29.3 billion in palm oil market. And Africa is doing a lot in that because out of that, out of that 26, 29 billion, almost 30 billion, Africa is doing about $4 billion in palm oil import. Who are the major markets in the world? India, China, Pakistan, Netherlands, Russia, Germany, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Poland, Egypt, Tanzania, South Africa, Ghana, Benin Republic. Even Nigeria imports palm oil, even though we have what it takes to produce. Look at the market in Africa, 4.28 billion. That speaks to just one thing, the humongous opportunity available in the African market, the humongous opportunity available in the African market. We'll now move on now to my proposal to Anambra State. I have two proposals. One is for the way I think we should run industrialization and agro processing in Nigeria to enable inclusion, an inclusive system that will help SME to grow. You know, we talk a lot about SME is the engine room of the economy. SME contributes a very huge volume of the, in the economy. SME do this, SME do that, SME create job in the economy. But when we want to take decisions, most of the time, SME is not really in the plan. Look at this model. When SME operates in all the assets of the chain, particularly when it's the same SME, or even when we have more than one type of SME, handling production, harvesting, and transport, 
primary processing and storage, secondary processing and package, marketing and sale, logistics and export is a very inefficient chain. Very inefficient value chain operator. It creates low processing capacity and low output because you don't have money. Few jobs are created, low cap quality and packaging because they can't even attain some standard expected. High cost of production because they can't do, they can't achieve economy of scale, non competitive product in the export market. Now, now, my recommendation and proposal is that can a state just decide that, look, we will take a product in this state that is, has a lot of raw materials in the state, a product that has a lot more material in the state, and we will partner with a private sector to develop a big, gigantic, and humongous processing plant. That processing plant is going to be very big, but it's not for profit. It's only generating enough to pay salary and maintain the equipment. SMEC remain in the farm, supported to grow more volume, and but the, the, the SME2 now is the one that is buying from SME1. SME2 take the raw material to the large processing facility. The large processing facility, we process, we package, and deliver to SME2. SME2 only do marketing and selling and export. Let me tell you what this will do. It will empower the farmers and give them more demand and expand their business. It will help create more business on SME2 to be able to focus more on market development and sales rather than processing and packaging so they can export. Then the large corporate take up the headache of Sun, the headache of NAVDAG, the headache of hazard analysis and, and critical control point certification, has solved the headache of, uh, of uh, ISO certification and the economy of scale is achieved. What this does basically is that the processing is left to a big company to do. You know, I saw this model for the first time in UK, Leicester. And I was shocked. SME just bring their raw materials. In two weeks, they'll come and pick finished product already packaged, only to go and sell in the market. Can you imagine that? This factory produced for several SME. The factory operates 24 hours because there is demand for SME. Demand. So farming is growing, job is being created, and market, export market is being developed. This creates an efficient value chain operator, high processing capacity and out, high output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production and competitive product in the export market, Increase job creation, decrease inequality, and decrease insecurity. Decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. Decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. You know why I'm emphasizing that? Insecurity is a fallout of joblessness. Insecurity is a fallout of joblessness. If the people are engaged, they will not get involved in most of the things they get involved in because they won't even have the time in the first place to get involved in that kind of thing. They will even have the time in the first place because they are busy. The impact of this model the impact of this model for state government go beyond creating uh, income revenue generation, it has a more impact on employment generation. It has a more impact on employment generation. An increased economic activity and increase economic activity. This, in my opinion, is a more effective, efficient, and enduring model for diversifying the economy of any state in the country. This model can also be replicated by federal government at the federal level. 
particularly for the exportation of solid minerals. Particularly for the exportation of solid minerals. Let's look at the last set uh, segment. How can the state directly make profit from exporting? How can the state directly make money from exporting directly? We are using palm oil again. We have made a number of assumptions. And please note, the assumptions we have made are based on the research done by agronomists. So they are subject to a little modification here and there, but it just creates a um, review to us what is possible. It is assumed that the state is able to use about 50% of the arable land, that's about 93,000 hectares, to cultivate palm, 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 palm fruits. The agronomist told us it's 18 metric ton yield per hectare. That means if we cultivate this, we can generate 1.6 million tons of palm fruit. If we process this, agronomist told us that it's about 90% yield. If we process to palm oil, we can generate 318 metric tons of palm oil. Cost of farming of this large land mass is about 1.91 billion, billion. The state government is not giving farmer to farm. They give farmer guarantee that they will buy the palm fruit or the palm oil from them, having trained them on how to produce the quality that will be exported. The cost of processing is about 9.54 billion plus the cost of farming. Then the cost of export is about 12 billion. Total cost of process of farming, processing and export is about $24 billion. This is what the state government will have to pay back to the farmers plus some profit on top. Let's go back to the state. If we sell that palm oil at $500 per metric ton, we can generate about fifty, about one fifty nine million dollars at exchange rate of three sixty, which is much more today. It's about fifty seven billion naira. The budget of the state in two thousand nineteen was one point seven billion. Look at this. This state can make profit. Even at 360, imagine if you now saw the parallel market of 52.39 billion naira. 52.39 billion naira. Basically, just showing in simple terms the model a state can adopt to generate income for itself. How will this work? The state will partner with a business that can coordinate this activity. The state provides funds to support the special purpose vehicle. The federal government could form farmers into cooperative in different parts of the state. The federal government could issue purchase order to farmers to buy the palm oil from them. This company that the state government have 85% stake or 80% stake provide training and input and support to farmers. Also provide collection center for the palm fruit or the palm oil. Clean and process the palm oil if necessary, if it's if they are providing palm fruit, source for buyers, do documentation and shipment, present document to buyer, get paid, and the state government take its own share, having paid the farmer off, pay the processor off, pay the partner off, the state have enough to be used for development within the state. In order to support exporter in your state, to enter export market in Africa, Europe, and America in a secure and sustainable way, the state government can do the following, partner with representative at export destination, set up warehouse at destination, set up entity at destination, like agent and distributor, partner with independent agent and distributor at destination, organize and sponsor manufacturer for exhibition in the export market. And the state will be able to significantly, significantly generate income for itself, not just through taxes, but through actual export of the product that can be found in the state. Bye-bye.